The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. Psalms 103, verse 1. Worship is the act of one devoting themselves towards a supreme being or deity. Worship is done with a deeper knowledge of who God is and why we worship Him. This means that worship should be done in truth. God spoke to the nation of Israel through the prophet Isaiah, telling them that there were some people who were drawing near Him with their lips, but they had removed their hearts far away from Him. And only their fear towards God was taught by the commandment of men. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. This clearly shows that God is never interested in what our mouths and lips speak towards him, but he is interested in what comes from our hearts. Are our hearts right with him as we worship him? One thing that man should realize is that God is all-knowing. He is able to see deep down in our hearts and determine whether we are worshiping him in truth or not, as he knows the motives behind our worship. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13. For anything that man does, whether in private or public, will definitely be known by God. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Luke chapter 12, verse 2. In the conversation of Jesus Christ with the Samaritan woman at the well, he reveals to her that God the Father is seeking worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 4, verse 23. When we talk of worshiping in spirit, we mean worship that is not only outwardly expressed, but the one that comes from the inside, someone's spirit. And when we talk of worshiping God in truth, it talks about worshiping God according to his prescribed ways and not humans' invented ways. Human invented ways of worship is what is called religion. For one to produce true worship that God requires, he should deal with what is inside of him. The question should be, what is inside me as I worship God? As Jesus Christ was speaking to the scribes and the Pharisees concerning worship and false worship, he warns them of the false prophets, for they always come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. This means that from the outward you will see them worshiping God in a humility-like way, like of a sheep, but the inside of them they are ravenous wolves. It might be difficult to determine them, but only by their fruit. As every good tree bears good fruit, and a bad tree bears bad fruit. For a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Therefore, the remedy of producing true worship is man to deal with what is inside of Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Matthew chapter 12, verses 33 through 35. When Jesus Christ uses the verb make, it means it depends on each and every one of us. God will not force someone, anyone, to clean the filthiness inside of them. It is a personal decision. As God is holy, he will only accept holy sacrifices from a holy body, soul, and spirit. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Holiness is the key thing that God requires, as from a holy lifestyle comes a holy sacrifice. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you will also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. 1 Peter chapters 14 through 16. When Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Rome, he pleads with them that by the mercies of God, they should present their bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, accepted to God, which is their reasonable service. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. In the same way during the times of spirit worship, we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable before God, as God is worshipped in the beauty of holiness. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. O oh, worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29. We are therefore supposed to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The question we should be asking ourselves is that, is holiness in us or holiness a part of us? 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. When we deal with what is inside of us by making sure that there isn't anger, pride, envy, bitterness, hatred, jealous, and malice, we will be in a good position to praise God. And God will use us, his vessels of honor, for his own glory. Apostle Paul instructs Timothy that in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Now Timothy should flee youthful lusts, pursuing righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who called on the Lord out of a pure heart. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 20 through 22. What every person who is intending to worship God should ask himself is, what is inside of me? What is inside of my heart? When we choose to live in filthiness and yet approach God in prayer, our hearts will condemn us because we will not be walking in truth. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Brethren, we have no option but to mind about what is inside of us by choosing to live righteous lives that are pleasing before God. And by doing that, we will be walking in truth, and therefore our worship will be in spirit and in truth. Above all else, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth, and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead, and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet, and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 27. Joy comes from God through salvation. The moment you give your life to Christ, you are open to the joy of God. This joy will kickstart when you allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. Today, many people have lost the joy of salvation, the joy that the Holy Spirit gave them. They have allowed sin to take it away. It is possible to lose the joy of salvation, and this will happen when sin comes into your life. There is just one thing you need to do when this happens. Pray the prayer of the Psalms. Psalm 51 verse 12 Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. A lot of us need this prayer. It is a prayer we ought to be praying all the time. It is a prayer we need to be saying so that we will draw back to Christ and then restore to us the joy that comes through salvation. Ask for the joy of the Lord. Seek it. We shouldn't hesitate to do this. This world is full of wickedness. There is no joy in this world. All of the joy that having a car or that material things are giving are just the shadows of joy. They will soon fade. You need to rethink. You need to choose the right source. Let Jesus be your source. The greatest joy is the one that comes from knowing that Jesus died for you and resurrected. He destroyed the works of the devil. He brought life to everyone who wants it. All of these things will give you joy. When the world is blowing you storms or trying to make sorrow be in you, when you remember all that Jesus has done, you have joy in you. The joy that you have in life will always be in you. days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers it takes the grace of god to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent and the lord jesus christ said except you repent you shall all likewise perish